It used to be, if you had a disability, you could have been shut away in a huge institution with thousands of people, maybe for the rest of your life. In 1972 in Michigan, there are 13,000 people with developmental disabilities in a dozen state institutions like Oakdale Regional Center, Plymouth Center for Human Development, and Coldwater Regional Center, and there are waiting lists to get in. The Michigan Department of Mental Health builds another, the 650-bed Macomb-Oakland Regional Center in Clinton Township, to care for people in Macomb and Oakland counties, just north of Detroit. But America is changing. Women and minorities are gaining rights, segregation becoming unacceptable. Families, caregivers, and Macomb Oakland staff believe that people with disabilities belong in society. Construction is halted at 124 beds. The Macomb Oakland family of advocates becomes obsessed with finding homes in the community instead. They didn't figure, however, that it would take a revolution to move people next door. Soon to be neighbors protested with hate-filled meetings. They used political muscle on legislators and city and county officials to keep homes out of their neighborhoods. Some used legal muscle, spending tens of thousands of dollars of neighborhood association money in the courts. Still others shot up, bombed out, or burned down homes to keep people with disabilities away. There were death threats, too. <laughs> not like anyone else. The American dream is to own a house in the suburbs with nice people like yourself next door and kids like yours down the block. The media jumped in. 25 million Americans watched the drama unfold as 60 Minutes visited a group home supported by Macomb, Oakland. Good morning. Parents and people with disabilities fought back. The spirit spread. Government officials took strong stands. We are going to live together in the communities of the state of Michigan. Nonprofit organizations who ran homes supported by Macomb Oakland won every lawsuit filed by neighbors, 75 of them, and eventually won in the Michigan Supreme Court. Good for you. Good for me. Yes, thank you. People with disabilities wrote thousands of letters to the governor and legislators. Patty Carnoti and Marjorie Thorley, who lived in Oakdale Regional Center for over 40 years, had enough. They wrote to the governor to get them out. We put, Dear Governor Blanchard, here we are just writing to you. We are two handicapped girls. We both are smart. We've been in Lapeer 46 years. Don't you think it is just about time you done? Something about it? People even organized a marathon relay run where people with disabilities and advocates ran from Detroit to the state capitol in Lansing. There they staged a mass rally that drew people from all over Michigan. People with disabilities ran up the Capitol steps and hugged the legislators. In all of my time in state government, this rally is probably the most mean, meaningful and impactful on my life of any that's ever happened here, and I thank you for what you're doing. The battle heats up when the Department of Mental Health asks Macomb Open to create Wayne Community Living Services to serve Detroit and Wayne County. Macomb Open creates an agency with community placement staff from three institutions, Southgate, Plymouth, and Northfield. Macomb Oakland now fights three times the neighborhood resistance in a catchment area of 4.3 million with a geographic size bigger than some states. Macomb Oakland helps close Michigan's 12 institutions, as well as 11 nursing homes. Some are no longer standing. 
Mark Stilwell, now a member of Macomb Oakland's board of directors, returns to Oakdale, where he grew up. Macomb Oakland found homes for Don Holman, Alfred Burke, and 400 others when it closed the Clinton Valley Center, a psychiatric institution. Is it good to be looking at it rather than living in it? Yeah. Yeah. Rodney Perry grew up here at the Plymouth Center. Jerry Provencal, the executive director of Macomb, Oakland, was a caregiver then. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, yeah. How cool? Real cool. Well, the, there'll never be another Plymouth uh, in, this, uh, in this state. There'll never be another institution built in, the, built in this state because of places like Macomb, Oakland. And we're going to continue to be make sure that we're a part of the community and our people are seen as a part of the community, contributors to the community. And we're going to continue to do what families want us to do and what people with disabilities want us to do. Yeah, great. Ash to ashes, dust to dust. The Plymouth Center. We are here to stay. The agency, the people, the spirit, we're not going away. Got it. Macomb, Oakland becomes part of hundreds of communities with hundreds and hundreds of homes. Thousands of people are freed. Thousands never have to enter. Finding homes unlocks the door to life. People are helped to live in apartments, in small group homes, with their families, with foster and adoptive families, and even in homes of their own. When James Ladd arrived at Oakdale at age 11, there wasn't much of anything he could really call his own. Not a room, bed, kitchen, even food. He shared everything with 8, 10, 20, 50 people. Things are a little different now. After 26 years as a patient with 6,000 other people, James Ladd is calling the shots as a homeowner. You prefer if I call you James or Mr. Ladd? Mr. Ladd. Mr. Ladd, okay. Whose house is this? Mine. Is it? Yeah. How long you live here? I, I'm here. Here. They say a man's home is his castle. It's impressive, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice. Hey, can, can we move in? No. <laughs> <laughs> For many people with disabilities, jobs, real jobs, have always been a faraway dream. Such was the case for Margaret Prinz when she entered Oakdale in 1933 during the Great Depression to begin her half-century stay. In those 50 years, she received no schooling and for a short time worked in the wood shop, making 87 cents an hour. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Margaret. Margaret Prinz lands her first job. How can I help you, ma'am? Everybody here knows Margaret. She's just part of Target. And she's, uh, she's really good at her job, too. I like it. I wouldn't work no place else. I tell them, hang it up. People with disabilities proved something they never should have had to prove in the first place, that they can be good neighbors. But when Macomb, Oakland got Marsha Young out of Plymouth, they never guessed she wouldn't be your ordinary neighbor. 20 years ago, in her prior home, Marsha saved a neighbor's life. He was doing repairs across the street when his 4,000-pound car rolled down the ramp on top of him, pinning him helplessly. Only Marsha heard his screams for help. 
So you looked out the window, and you, you pointed to staff? Her caregivers didn't listen, pulling her away. She ran back, flailed her arms, even bit herself. Sent to her room, she kept coming back, until after a half hour, she dragged her caregiver out to the front lawn of her neighbor's home. <laughs> Marsha Young saved the man's life. You remember it like it was yesterday? When Kim Cornelius gets out of Plymouth, he tries to be a good citizen. You can hire to get up in here to vote because everything is about too high. It makes me feel like it's a, a, a barrier. <laughs> It stops me from doing, doing something for my country. How nervous are you? Not too nervous. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When Al Bartolino lived at Oakdale, never in his wildest dreams did he ever think he would get married. Kids lived and died in institutions and nursing homes, never knowing the warmth of a home and family. Staff at facilities often said that no family would ever want to care for the children. They were unplaceable, and that no one could possibly provide complex health care in a home. Children would certainly die. Macomb Oakland becomes an early champion to get kids out of facilities, pioneering permanency planning and the family support subsidy so kids can go back home to their families. And so countless more will never need to leave their families in the first place. Very good. Macomb Oakland liberates hundreds and hundreds of children from nursing homes and institutions, finding them loving foster and adoptive families. Lois Zampich has been taking children into her home for the last 16 years. Lois was originally told Holly would never even be able to turn over on her own, but Lois says Holly, who's now nearly four, is proof of the difference love and caring can make in a child's progress. The doctors are calling her a miracle baby because, of, of course, they said she'd never roll over, and she's walking, and she gets around, she gets into mischief, and as, as she's doing it, I have to remember, she was never going to roll over. She wasn't going to do these things. This is Valerie. Hi, Valerie. How are you? Ruth Taylor, a volunteer mom with Macomb Oakland's parents group, co-founds the Parent Monitoring Program, where teams of parents monitor group homes. It receives national claim and international attention. Mrs. Taylor is flown to the White House. Macomb Oakland's programs have been recognized before by Presidents Carter and Reagan. Here in the Oval Office, President William Jefferson Clinton presents Ruth Taylor with the highest volunteer award in America. Macomb Oakland is a representative that's seen the president. He learned that you have to keep on moving just like an old oak tree. You stick with it, stay on it. So in Michigan, there mm -hmm. are about 10 million people. Nobody lives in the institution anymore. The world watches the story of liberation. Leaders come to be inspired and to learn how to help people succeed in the community. Macomb, Oakland has answers when others do not. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Curtain Falls. Former Eastern Bloc Communist nations flock to Macomb, Oakland. Sandy Lahan accompanies leaders from Kazakhstan. This is an opportunity for them to do something now, not just for the people that they serve, but for everybody that will follow. I mean, they could change the course of events in their country. Pop 
Da Woo Lee, the Dan Rather of South Korea's version of 60 Minutes, covers the Macomb Oakland story. MOIC라고 불리는 장애인 지역 복지 서비스 센터에서 the international reputation of Macomb, Oakland draws Akiko Ikeda, an official from the United Nations, who uses Macomb, Oakland programs as models for other countries. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> it's been pretty impressive. The Macomb, Oakland family circles the globe from Texas to New Zealand. All told, Macomb, Oakland helps close hundreds of institutions across America and around the world greatly changing the future for thousands of people in 54 nations, a quarter of the world. Our history of human rights movements is an important part of our heritage, our American identity. Just after the millennium, the Bentley Historical Library at the University of Michigan requests Macomb Oakland's archives. It's very significant in terms of the disability rights movement, the whole deinstitutionalization. I mean, this was a major change in policy and a major achievement and I'm sure it's going to be of interest to historians for generations to come. Yeah, why don't you? Okay, okay one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Today, Macomb, Oakland is the largest nonprofit in southeastern Michigan. Tempered by the fire of the human rights revolution, the entire staff at Macomb, Oakland has evolved, pulling together unlike at any other agency from tech staff to accounting, maintenance to vocational supports, quality management to recreation therapists. Macomb, Oakland staff are much more than experts at supporting people and families. They live, they breathe, they fight for people to succeed. Holy Toledo! Supports coordinators are at the heart of helping. Patrice Cheatham looks out for Mercedes and her mom. Merry Christmas! Nursing supervisor Mary Jo Hollibrands makes sure Jackie Walls gets preventative care. Look at you, bright. Got a good smile. Yeah, I know. Psychologist Laura Zdravkowski counsels the Miller family. Two, three, <laughs> The Cole Oakland staff involve hundreds of community organizations. Families like the Snyders had extreme home makeovers by the Kensington and Paradox churches. What do you think, Sarah? I like it. Macomb, Oakland staff encourage hundreds of businesses across Michigan to help, like Carhartt the Clothing Company and the Red Wings alumni. Fun and raising a lot of money. It was it was a, a good effort and certainly something we enjoy doing for the MORC. The Futures Foundation, Macomb, Oakland's fundraising arm, gives special grants for hundreds of people a year. Supports coordinator Anne Marie Long rescues Carolyn Holmes and daughter Carol from a homeless shelter, finding them a comfortable home. I don't know that much about your agency, but I seriously doubt that. The rest of the people work that hard to help somebody. But they have lost everything. I have a lamp. And uh, but this is our best. Futures gets them furniture. Futures. Futures Foundation has been such a blessing to me. I mean, you come out of those shelters and you are so grateful for the smallest, smallest thing but now it really feels like home. Yeah, and that's a fantastic feeling. The Mount Pleasant Center, Michigan's last institution closed in 2009. The Department of Community Health requested Macomb Oakland's Center for Positive Living to assist all of Michigan's counties with developing a culture of gentleness so they could comfortably transition the last 120 people back home. Get our little friend out. Justine Bishop and Leslie Palmer with Progressive Lifestyles in Macomb, Oakland, helped Nick move into his new home. For love, compassion, friendship, hope, all the things that he's been missing for quite a few years in his life, this is the place for him, and he's gonna get it here.
Macomb Oakland gets 600 seniors and people with disabilities out of nursing homes through a state program called My Choice Waiver. Social workers like Lisa Druick also prevent people from going in, like Larry White, who is new to Macomb Oakland. More manly, not pink and frilly, so. He's been trapped in his home for 17 years. The only time I go out of the house is when I call 911 on a stretcher. Lisa Druick finds funds for a ramp, and carpenter Larry White, a dues-paying union member, asks his union brothers to build it. You made it. You made it, brother. You made it. <laughs> Good for you. I will finally feel free. I have been a prisoner trapped in them YY own house for too many years. Free at last. The 30th annual MORC Caregiver Appreciation Day. 8,000 caregivers are employed by the 100 nonprofits Macomb Oakland helped create. The biggest and longest running Caregiver Appreciation Day in the country. Maybe even in the world. Maybe you're Everyone has a chance to shine in the MRC Cole's Caregiver Fashion Show. best thing that I do for MRC. So in the end, Rodney Perry, once a little boy at Plymouth, and thousands of others now have a chance to shine. Thousands more children, like Chris and Shane, never had to set foot in an institution. When Chris and Shane's birth families couldn't care for them any longer, the Johns family found a place in their heart, first becoming foster parents, then adopting them. The Johns family enrolled Chris and Shane in school, regular school, not special education. Seven years later, Chris is here at Rochester Adams High School. As I thought about his life in the future and uh, getting a job where he would live, who would be his friends, who would be contacts with him. I thought, you know, it makes a lot of sense to get that started now and let that community build and let him grow with that. Alle zusammen bitte, das Flugzeug. Das Flugzeug. Der Zug. Der Zug. We visit people. <laughs> Chris is often assisted by other students or peer tutors. Before I started working with Chris, I didn't really care about school or anything like that. But now that I started working with him, it, it like gave me a reason to go to school because I wanted to see him. And also because now this is like what I want to do when I graduate. I'm going to major in special education and hopefully help more kids like Chris. You come on like a dream, peaches and cream, lips like strawberry wine. You're 16. 16. You're beautiful. Beautiful. Whoa, 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 whoa. Second hour Adams Choir, Chris's favorite class. It's kind of a good experience for us just to, you know, get to know Chris and, you know, how he is and. It's just a real good experience for all of us to uh, see him and him be with us, and it just worked out real well. And he's part of our family, and again, learning how to deal with it, and like Chris says, and uh, uh, just becoming wiser and deeper and more understanding.
springtime at Meadowbrook Theater. The biggest of days for Brother Shane, graduation day from his high school, Rochester High. Time for Kathy Johns to make a big fuss like all moms do. Okay. Shane Eric Johns. Okay. 